Thanks for the introductions. I'll just jump right to, to my presentation about the conversion project which we did in Burgo Verzuolo. Uh, first, a couple of short words about Burgo company. Uh, Burgo is an uh, is, uh, Italian paper producing company. We, we have about 3,400 people working for the group and uh, annually we produce little less than 2 million tons of paper and, and paper board. And, and the turnover is 1.6 billion. So that's shortly Burgo in, in numbers. <clears throat> and uh, if we take a look where actually we are located, uh, we have 11 paper mills which are located in, in Italy, mostly in the northern part of Italy, and one integrated pulp and paper mill which is located in Belgium. The, the production is split into five groups. Uh, basically, we have the graphical papers section where we produce uh, publishing papers, which are, are me mechanical papers, uh, lightweight coated, medium weight coated. We have the fine papers, uh, both coated and uncoated, and specialty paper groups, which is uh, in our mosaic group. And then uh, this uh, more recent addition of, con of container board group, where, which is con called, called uh, Burger Container Board. And since this data in this slide is still from, from 2019, the virtual mill is still included in our publishing papers group, but uh, actually today it's, it's part of our container board group. So, uh, uh, well, that's it for the, for the Burgan. Let's, let's go, to, go to see our project. Uh, in 2019, uh, we converted on our virtual BM9 from lightweight coated production to, to container board. And, and this machine is from the period of time where the machines were still big and beautiful from the early 2000s. And uh, shortly in numbers, what the, what the paper machine is about, uh, it's a pretty wide machine, more than 10 meters trim at, at the forming section, running 2,000 meters per minute design speed. Also, we run the production more than 1,900 meters per minute, so it's a fast, big, nice, beautiful, beautiful machine. And uh, this was now converted for container port production uh, with a daily capacity more than 1,500 tons. And uh, you you can see the layout in the in the bottom of the slide, but uh, let's take a little bit closer look on, on, on the production line as it is today. So <clears throat> I'll start from a little bit wrong order. So I'll jump first to the, to the paper machine. And uh, if we start our journey from the, from the wet end of the machine, since the, the new product of, of container port is considerably different from the lightweight coated, we, we had to do something for the, for the wet end. Basically, we had to rebuild the, the forming section for increased drainage capacity. And uh, the press section was also in, in the typical configuration for these fast lightweight crates with the, with the transfer belt design. So this was then rebuilt for a double felted design. And uh, obviously, also the, the dry end of the machine was not suitable for, for container boards, so we needed to lengthen the machine to, to fit, fit in a new after dryer section with, with a lot of more, more uh, drying capacity. So the, the reel was moved forward. We, we had to build a completely new, new after dryer section. And uh, our size press was converted from, from film, film coding to start uh, application. And uh, of course, all the air dryers after the, the size press were rebuilt into a cylinder drying design. So that's more or less the paper machine side. And uh, next, let's see what we had to do for, for the stock preparation. Uh, the virtual mill is a little bit particular since the mill is, plet, is split in, in two different areas by a railroad which is close, crossing the, the mill site. In, in, the, in the far side of this slide you can see the paper machine building there where we have the, uh, the, the paper machine we just looked. 
And uh, then on the other side of the railroad, we, we build a completely new area for raw material storage and, and a pulping and core screening section of, of the stock preparation. Looking into the details, <coughs> we can uh, have a short look in, in a little bit simplified flow sheet of what the, what the Valmet concept for stock preparation in this recycled fiber is like. Uh, everything starts from, from the pulpers, obviously. Uh, so in this, uh, this project, we had a, a preparation line which, is, uh, which has a daily capacity of 1,800 tons. It starts with uh, two vertical pulpers, which each are equipped with, with pulper cleaning circulation. So each of the vertical pulpers has a secondary pulper, or two secondary pulpers. And the reject from the pulpers, uh, secondary pulpers goes to a drum screen. Uh, following the pulpers, we have a high consistency cleaning stage, two stages, and there, thereafter we have the dump tower. From the dump tower, we feed the stock to the to the core screening section, which in in uh, Valmet uh, concept consists of four stages. The first two stages have a uh, basket screen design with two millimeter holes in the baskets. And then the third stage is a uh, disc screen, which, which has a deflaking capacity. Uh, actually, during the project, we already did some modification to our tail screen section of the core screening. So you can see two different machines there. One of them is a, is a conventional drum. And then the second one is a combination screen, which, which has a has a disc screen and, and a vertical basket. So this was one of the actions that we did during the project together with Valmet to improve our raw material yield. This part of the stock preparation is built on the, on the new building, which we saw in the previous slide. So that's on the, on the same side as the raw material storage. Uh, but uh, if we move on to the to the rest of the stock preparation line, this part is then built into the paper machine building. We have uh, first we have the low consistency cleaning to get rid of the sand and glass and so on, and then we have a fractionation uh, section where we can split the stock into long and short fractions of the fiber. The short fraction goes directly to the disc filter for thickening and then thereafter to the, to the fiber uh, storage tower. The long fiber instead goes to the fine screening section we have where we have four stages of, of uh, slot screens uh, to clean the stock. And thereafter we, we end up to the long fraction disc filter and the storage tower. So that's uh, basically a very much simplified flow sheet. Uh, next, we can take a look a little bit more in detail what the equipment look like and how they are arranged. This first slide is from, from the core screening and pulping section. Uh, everything starts from the bale conveyors, which you can see on two, two pieces on, on top of this slide. And then there's a nice photograph of the bale wire cutting device. Uh, the, the conveyors feed the stock to the pulpers, uh, which, uh, which are located uh, on the center of this slide. And between the pulpers, we have the high consistency cleaning equipment. Uh, on the right of this, of this slide, you can, you can see the core screening, the basket screen machines. And uh, between the big drum and those basket screens, there are the disc screens, the third and fourth stage, where you can see the drum and uh, the combination screen. Then at the paper machine building, we have the cleaners and, and fine screening. Uh, the cleaners are from on the top center of the slide, uh, the first stage, and there on, on, on bottom of that, you can see the further stages. On the left side, there are the fractionators which split the stock into the long and on short fiber fractions. And uh, on top right, you can see the, the big disc screen, which is for the short fiber fraction uh, on uh, on next to the fractionators on the left, you can see the fine screens, and then on the right, the, the smaller disc filter, which is for the long fraction. Having completed this uh, very exhaustive project, uh, finally on, 
on January 5th of 2020, we got the paper on real and everybody was really happy. And actually, we were really, really lucky to do this in, in this time because we were able to start up the machine without suffering too much from the coronavirus. And uh, soon after the startup, we, we had all the restrictions for travel and, and everything. So this was one of the uh, luckiest startups, which I remember. Uh, after the startup, we, we, we had a cooperation agreement, a project which is still ongoing with Valmet. And we've been working with a lot of stuff in the production line. Uh, one example is, um, is this dry weight profile optimization work that we did with the Valmet specialists. And uh, since all the, all the travel restrictions, this work was done with uh, remote support from Valmet. And as you can see, we really got nice results out of this optimization work. All of this, of course, sounds really, really nice and every, everybody was very happy and so on. But uh, every project has its glitch and also this one had this. Uh, and and uh, after the startup <clears throat> in 2020, in the springtime, we ran into trouble with the power consumption of our fractionator machines. And, and we were getting constant alarms from our MCC for too high power consumption. And while we were taking a look what's going on in the machines, we found out that the, the bearing units of the rotors had, uh, had been damaged. And uh, <clears throat> we, of course, uh, were immediately in contact with, with Valmet. And uh, the first actions that we did, we, we found a way to bypass some of the machines to maintain the production without having to stop the the, the stock preparation line. Thereafter, thereafter we went on uh, troubleshooting this, uh, what's going on with the bearing units. And um, we installed some, some uh, instrumentation to, to monitor what's going on with assistance from Valmet. And uh, with this instrumentation and our, our remote connection, the specialists from Valmet were able to, to continue the troubleshooting from, from the remote site in, in Finland. Uh, later on, uh, we found out that the, the bearing unit was just uh, under dimension for this this high, this big size machine. So uh, we we had a team to, together working with Valmet, and we found out a way to implement new bearing design for this existing machine without the need to change the the machine frame or the basket designer. And uh, in the end, everything worked out really nice. And uh, we were really happy to see from Valmet the response time. Uh, the, the new units were in, in a short period of time delivered to the mill, and we were able to uh, uh, plan shutdowns to change all of the equipment without causing any disturbance to our production process. So in the end, everything worked out really, really nicely. After this, this nice story, where we are today, we um, <clears throat> we can say that we've reached the, the capacity of the of the paper machine and the stock preparation line. We've run uh, actually more than fourteen hundred tons already. Even this slide says a little bit less. Uh, we are not in the average producing so much, but we have seen that the paper machine and the stock preparation can do it. The quality. Uh, one of the nice feedback we get get from our customers is that our board is really really nice and clean compared to the to the average quality in in Italy. So this is very nice to hear. Uh, we are consistently reaching all the the strength properties, which obviously are very important for these container board grades. And um, since we have the, all the multi-variable multi controls and, and everything from Valmet, we really have no trouble maintaining this, this quality level. Uh, like, like already said, we, we continue, continue working with Valmet in a, in a cooperation project. And uh, as one of the most important issues in, in making money with, with container board production is to, to handle the costs of the production. And we have several actions going on with Valmet to, to improve uh, our cost management, uh, including, for example, the optimization of use of the raw material. And uh, for what comes to the paper machine and, and the stock preparation equipment, uh, our paper machine never really had any big trouble in, in runnability. Uh, obviously, we had to do some things in the press, for example, since the lightweight production 
era, the machine is running in completely different speed range and some of the things we need to, to improve in, in tail threading, but today the paper machine is running really nicely. And what comes to the stock preparation, we, we have a very efficient and, and, and a nice stock preparation line. And uh, shortly said, we never ever had to stop the paper machine in, in a lack of stock. And uh, having said that, I conclude my presentation and thanks everybody for your attention.